Hello, this is Alison Yates here. I'm going to show you how to paint with felt tip pens on parchment. Now to start with, I'm actually using a Wink of Stella pen here to put a base layer on my parchment. So what I've done, I've actually traced the pattern of the flowers with um, a very fine black pen that's waterproof. It has to be waterproof or um, permanent so that when you put water anywhere near the line, it won't smudge and you must allow it to dry before doing any um, other work with it. So I'm going to show you two different methods. That's the first method there with the Wink of Stella. Then I've got some pearlescent white paint here which I've put a little squidge onto my palette. Then I'm going to get my um, paintbrush and just really really water this down. If you try and put it on too thick it looks not good, um, looks far too thick. You still want a translucency with this painting. So make sure it's really well watered down, about the consistency of milk really. And then I'm just moving it into shot there. So you need to um, wet your brush and dry it off mostly um, on, your, on your kitchen towel. Now here I've got my number two round brush um, and I'm just smoothing this paint on a little tiny bit. You can't really see it clearly there, but um, you, you may be able to later on when I get the light better. So keeping the brush um, flat over the, over the petals and just smoothing it carefully over the top of it. Just sweeping back and forth and uh, trying not to get too much on there. It gives a lovely coat, um, lovely base coat, this, this pearlescent and the Wink of Stella too, because when you put the felt tip pens onto parchment normally, you'll find that um, they sometimes are a little bit more difficult to move around. Um, particularly when you're not experienced at painting, that can be quite frustrating. So if you do put um, a base coat on, you're going to have a much more successful time at it. Now I've put a bit of black card underneath so I can see what I'm doing now. Um, and you can see now I'm painting the leaf with this pearlescent paint. And what I'm doing, I'm not actually smoothing it over the whole leaf. I'm actually painting in little stripes and lines so that you, when you put the colour on the top, you get the impression of a few little veins appearing. So again, keeping it very, very light, working from the inside of the leaf out, making sure you get the direction of the veins right. And continuing, that's it, right the way to the top. Sorry, my hand's in the way, you can't really see the tip of the brush, but try and keep it so they're just using the tip of the brush to make contact with the parchment. There you, there you can see a little bit of a glint where the, um, where the paint is still wet. And then just painting the base of the flower and the stem as well. So now we're going to move on to the actual painting. So I've put some felt tip pen onto my palette and I'm going to use the water pot again. Um, you just want your brush to be slightly damp. Now I always put it in the water and you can see there I'm rolling it on the tissue. If you continue to roll all the time, you'll keep that point as best you can. Same with the paint there, I put it in, twi twiddled it round a little bit and then rolled it off. Now we're going to do two different sorts of painting again here. So this is the Wink of Stella one I did. And I'm actually going to smooth the paint on from the centre of the flower towards the outside edge. Any little bubble you get there, you can just mop up or take it to pull it towards the centre of the flower each time. So by starting at the centre, keeping your brush a little bit flat, you're really just rubbing it to and fro, back and forth, and hopefully you'll get it slightly darker towards the centre of the flower and lighter as you get towards the tip of the flower. This works quite well for small flowers. It doesn't work so well for, um, for larger ones, 
but we'll come on to that sort of method of painting in a minute when we do the other flower. So as I'm showing you two different sorts of way of putting the colour onto your flower, onto your parchment. Just keep your brush slightly damp all the time so it doesn't drag and again any little bubbles you can pull towards the centre or if you get a massive bubble just dry your brush off and, um, and dab it up with a dry brush. So that's that one nearly done. So what we're going to do, we'll put a little bit more on that later but we'll leave it to dry for the moment and move on to the other flower in a minute when I've done the, the base of the flower there. Right, so get some more paint on the brush and this time we're going to paint the other flower and I'm going to show you the other method. So this other method will be perfect for larger flowers, larger, larger petals, larger areas. What we're doing now is you're following the edge of your petal and the point of the brush will stay at the edge all the time and you kind of sweep it back and forth. Some people do little circles with your brush, but whatever's comfortable to you. The most important thing you can see there is that I'm turning the work as I go. I've got my brush at a 90 degree angle to the edge. I've got my brush a little bit flat so that it's working on the inside of the petal as well. So you don't get a line on the inside of your, um, of your petal where you've got your brush flat, that helps to smooth the transition between the edge of your petal and the inside part. As I say the most important thing is to remember to turn your work so make sure it's freely movable and you can then work your brush round comfortable to you. So just speeding things along a little bit now, just coming to the last petal. So there we go. Keep sweeping it back and forth, or if you prefer little circles. If you're using this method, you might find that you don't actually need to trace your edge. You can use this method to um, create an edge by sweeping back and forth. You'll find that that will create an edge for you. It's also a method you can use painting um, with inks or acrylic paints, whichever you prefer. But now as we just come along and finish this one, do the, all right, we're going back to the, uh, the first one now. So I'm going to give it a second coat. Again, the same method as before, sweeping back and forth, but we're just going to cover the inner half of the petal. So that gives it more depth. So you can see exactly the same method as we did originally. So as I say, this works well for smaller flowers, smaller petals, smaller items. Just sweep back and forth and you get a lovely graduation of colour. And you can give it two or three coats depending on, on how much depth you want to create. But it's the same thing, keeping that brush flatter so that you can get the graduation and the smoothness in the colour. So now we're going to start on the, the other flower again and this time I'm just going to add a few little fine lines. Now these really, really are very, very fine. You need to use just like one hair on your brush. Don't be tempted to, to use um, a very fine brush because funnily enough you can't get a decent point with a very fine brush usually. Um, a slightly fatter, rounder brush will give you more control and you can keep, as I say, um, rolling your brush you always get that point and then if you hold your brush upright and you put the heel of your hand onto the the, uh, the table you'll find that you'll be able to control some very very fine lines just to give it depth of color again you don't have to do this if you if you feel that you uh, 
your petals are painted sufficiently well with the, uh, the method you used, that's absolutely fine. And we we'll just paint the underneath part of that flower with the red. And again, you can add as many coats as you like. You can put in several coats, but just to let, make sure it's dry before you add another coat and never, ever, ever over wet your brush because the parchment doesn't like water too much or a lot of water too much anyway. Just adding a few more little lines just to keep the depth going. Now we're going to start with some green. Green's a funny colour to try and uh, get a decent colour for. If you if you haven't got a decent colour in your um, collection of felt tip pens, try mixing the colours on the palette. Believe it or not, yellow and black make a very good green. Um, a lot of yellow and a little bit of black, surprisingly, will make a decent green for your um, for your leaves and stems and things. Or try adding yellow to a slightly more bluey green because a lot of the collections these days seem to have so much bluey green and that's not really very natural for um, for foliage. Um, right, so I'm going to start now on the leaf and I've got a fairly, um, a lot more colour rather, <laughs> on my brush and you can see there it's actually puddling but I'm flattening my brush right, right down so I'm covering as much of that leaf as I possibly can in one stroke. And then you just sweep it backwards and forwards and then you can wiggle, wiggle if you like and do little circles if you prefer. I actually just mainly prefer to sweep it backwards and forwards. You can see there the brush going back and forth, turning your work as you go, keeping the brush very, very flat, making sure the point of the brush is always pointing to that edge and as long as you follow all those rules you should end up with a beautiful smooth finish and doesn't matter how many times you go back and forth just keep pushing and you'll find that the paint will push more towards the edge and as I say if you don't want to trace you don't have to you'll find that um, by doing this method you will automatically get a deeper edge a little bit more paint on my brush and we're going to sweep up the centre of the leaf now to give it a bit of colour in the middle. You could change colour if you wanted to at this stage, but we'll, uh, we'll stick with the same colour and again sweep it back and forth up the centre so that you get one colour, uh, one half of the leaf coloured deeper than the other half. So I've just speeded that little bit up for you and then we'll paint the rest of the stem here and then we'll move on to the centres of the flowers. So I'm actually just putting my felt tip pen straight on to the, the centre there with the yellow because I want quite a deep colour and it's a small area. You can add a little bit of green right in the very, very centre um, or you can add stamens or whatever else you think you might want in the centre of your flower. So you can add any more depth of colour as you need it. And there we've painted it. So now we're going to move on to some embossing because embossing is important um, when you've done your painting. So I'm now just lightly embossing, not too heavy, certainly not at first, with my little shader from the outside of the petals towards the inside. You really basically emboss the same as you would, would if you were doing some white work. 
maybe not quite so heavy. So just build it up slowly, light coats to start with. And of course this will um, highlight the, the front of your work beautifully. It'll make the, sha the, um, the sparkle and the shine stand out and it gives the colour some white to sit on. So using the ball tools now I've just embossed the centre and uh, using it to emboss the calyx and the stem a little bit as well. So again, I've just speeded that bit up for you and embossing the centre and there you can see it's highlighted beautifully. Again down the calyx and the stem. I'm going to use my larger shader now and emboss the leaf. Again, not too heavy. You can always build it up a little bit more if you want it later, but just start off softly what you're doing is your, if if your parchment does warp a little bit, which it can do with some wa with water and paint on it, you're bring it, really bringing it back to flat, and you're just highlighting it slightly. Remember to emboss um, your lines in the right direction for your veins. In other words, towards the centre base of the leaf from the outside edge in. And I'm just going to highlight the centre of that leaf a little bit where I've left it paler. So again, putting your, your, your tool up against that centre edge and flick it outwards. Now you can see the leaf done. So thank you for watching and we'll be back at another time with uh, some more videos.